So I, at one point, got access to very advanced technology that enabled me to collect the atoms and the molecules in the ear, like you would make a, a snapshot with your camera and you put all the pixels together and you get an image, uh, you know, so that you can see. So do I with the invisible. And these technologies uh, enable me to break up a uh, real smell into individual molecules and compounds and then reconstruct it and we replicate it as, as close up to the original as possible. Uh, my database and lab consists of up to 10,000 molecules that I have built up over the last 25 years. Yes, I'm a Sisa Tolas. I call myself a professional in-betweener because there are smells everywhere and all over and uh, there's a whole world to learn how to do it. And uh, so I don't uh, necessarily have the desire to call myself something specifically. So I try to kind of be very broad about what I do and who I am. But uh, having said that, I have organic chem chemistry and linguistic and art as a background and try to put all the three and more together for exploring the invisible. The air that we all breathe, the all, we all share is my topic of concern. So we are born with uh, hardware and software, uh, you know, the body and the senses. And all of these are there for a purpose and we have it there for free. If we don't use it properly, soon it will not be there anymore. You know, what is evolution all about? You know, if you don't use your tail, soon you don't have one. Yeah, and the same is with the senses and we live in a world where the sense of smell has been kind of ignored or suppressed because of its intrinsic emotional and private capacity. And that's beautiful, you know, but now with all the knowledge accessible around neuroscience, psychology, chemistry, you know, you name it, I see it, suddenly we also have the possibility to understand how the body and the senses are actually working. You know, what does the information provided by a smell molecule actually do to the body and the brain? The work in the back of me is a work that was uh, also on display in Oslo. And it's uh, about um, climate change. It's about research that I'm doing at the North Sea about pollution and the change of ecology in the ocean. So you have sensors on the northwest coast of Norway that collect data, sent to the cloud. The cloud send the information to ICA, microcomputers, activate the ventilators that are embedded with molecules that are recorded in the North Sea. So you only have these ventilators operate and work if there is storm and wind on the west coast of Norway. So it's a real time. Yeah, again, you know, the site specific is core to my work, you know, understanding the context where the work is, is half the work, you know, being there is half my job, you know, showing up myself is essential to what I do. And uh, what is here uh, very interesting to also explore by having the, literally the carte blanche to, to kind of explore the building and taking down walls and revealing the, the, the beauty of the building and the, 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 the roughness of the building was fantastic, you know, and it, you know, the, for example, if you look at the floor, the legacy of the floor, the, the experience uh, this floor have had is very important for my work, you know, that all the scars, you know, is underneath the surface, like, how did that scar happen? We never forget how we got the scar on the skin. So do buildings, they don't forget. So I wanted to kind of emphasize that. I say, how beautiful is that? Imperfection is beautiful, yeah? And uh, yeah, so lots of these are, are become core uh, elements in this exhibition. As I said before, air is, if there's nothing going on in the building, the air is still there. The biggest host of architecture is the air. And what I do is try to understand how this building is breathing and lay out the molecules accordingly. So downstairs, there's a heavy molecule. So you have to kind of, you have to kind of bend down to get some of the messages. And then you, you kind of move upwards slowly. And then you come up here, you have the air molecules, which then here represented to the wind. So trying to understand the movement of the building and how it lived, you know, you know, again, like, operating uh, towards it like, as if it's uh, another matter or biology, piece of biology, yeah? Another work uh, which is essential to 
specifically in the US and Philadelphia, is the money work, the money project. Um, in it's, the title is called Liquid Money, Artificial. And it is um, a continuation of Oslo. The ticket was liquid money, was uh, fluid uh, recordings of, uh, of money. Here, it is the US dollar that's recorded, replicated. And rather than you have to pay for it, we are giving it to you. So uh, as you leave the exhibition, you will get a vial with the smell of money and you can put it on your body and you maybe feel rich and you definitely, hopefully, will not forget the experience you had in the ICA. So there will be piping that connects the whole exhibition. These pipings are air tubes, kind of indirectly connected to the air, to the air condition. Uh, one is uh, with the smell of money and the other with the vanilla. So again, back to the science behind it, which is essential to what you see, you know, understanding how smell works in you know, how, how the brain works, how the body works, in terms of how smell is perceived is one thing, but also chemistry and how you know, the chemical reaction between molecules is essential to what is on display. In one room, they become one smell. I'm very happy about, uh, about having the opportunity to show this massive amount of work in the context of ICA and, and University of Pennsylvania, absolutely.